Uh, with that being said, I'll call the meeting to order and welcome everybody and thanks for uh, being uh, being here right at six o'clock. With that being said, <clears throat> the minutes were provided to you in your meeting notice and I would entertain a motion to accept those minutes um, and I'll, I'll wait for that. Yep. So moved. Second. So it's been moved and seconded to, move, to approve the minutes as presented in your board packet. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 And it's approved. All right, first time on the agenda, uh, a theme here, board vacancies. We haven't been able to fill that <laughs> and we're, we're still struggling with this and we, um, so, Christina, I think it's always a good idea to remind everybody what vacancies we have available on the board. Yes, so our, we have a, an open vacancy for our vet, for a veterinarian, and one for a mental health practitioner. Um, I know I sent out, I believe last month, um, it may have been two months ago now, um, the application and the description. So we are looking for individuals that um, either live, reside here in Independence or have their job here doing those duties here in Independence. So as always, if we have anybody or if you have a contact, we would sure um, entertain extending an offer or at least uh, an invitation to somebody. So thank you for that, Christina. Uh, discussion on cumical diseases. <clears throat> and I'll turn it to you again. Well, I'm going to turn it over to Lauren Campbell, our public okay. health manager and epidemiologist, to share. I know she has just a few things. Yeah, I pulled some of our numbers earlier today. For um, STIs this year, we're looking at 205 cases so far this year. Um, that's about the same as we were for last year. It's about 13 less, but they still have some time to trickle in for the month of September. So we might be at about exactly the same as last year. Um, we are seeing a lot of Shigella and Campylobacter cases right now. There is a national outbreak of Shigella occurring at the same time. Um, it started in this state in like the north, uh, southeast section and then moved up towards the metro area about a month ago. Uh, we've seen about nine cases in the last three months for Shigella, most of them in September. And for comparison, we had five in all of 2023. Um, a lot of our cases are houseless individuals that um, we've been getting their case reports after they leave the hospital and we have not been able to get a hold of them. They don't have a working phone number. They don't have a good address. So we don't have a good idea of what's causing um the outbreak so far, a couple of our more recent cases appear to not be houseless, so we're hoping to get a little bit more information on like their food history um, in the next couple of days. I know Jackson County just released that they had a pertussis case. We've also seen a couple in the last couple of months. Like so far this year, we have had a few pertussis cases um, that we're keeping an eye on and contacting as soon as we get those lab reports. And in addition to those things, we have seen some tick and mosquito borne diseases. I think that covers most of what we've seen in the last couple months. If anyone has any questions. Um, you know, actually in today's paper, there is a piece about the H5N1 that was reported in Missouri. Um, I think it was more on the St. Louis side, but are I mean, are you aware of any? Thing else as far as that or we have not um had any seen anything up this way most of them are around the dairy farms that i know at least in missouri that there's been some concern about the healthcare workers contracting it as well um, but they didn't get tested when they were sick so they've been working on like an antibody test to kind of um look at it i have been working with our planner to like re-up what our responses are from the last um from the COVID pandemic and then uh, the flu before to just make sure we're still current on all of the practices if we see any cases in the area. There was, I mean, part of the gist of the article was there was some uh, 
issues or concern as far as uh, some of the national public health, uh, CDC and all that, getting information or sharing information uh, with the Missouri Health Department? Are you, I mean, is, is as far as, I mean, I assume that information is being relayed to the uh, CDC. Hopefully. Yeah, tip, typically, at least how it works for the rest of the cases, when we get a case, we do the investigation, we send it to state, and then state sends it to CDC. Depending on the case, it either goes monthly or as soon as it's completed. Um, we've had some more like rare cases in the last couple, not like the, um, not the flu, but we've had some like more rare uh, mosquito and tick diseases in the last couple of months. And those ones I know state hounds us to get done within the next like day because the CDC is interested in it because they saw the lab report. Um, so I would assume it's the same with that. We just haven't had any cases. So I'm, we do talk about it at all of our monthly updates, how it would work. We just went over some of it because I know they had a hard time contacting some of the cases um, because they don't want to stop working to isolate and get tested and all of that. So that's always been a struggle and that's been turned over to like the FDA to go on the like dairy farms where it's been occurring. But Missouri, oh my. Yep, I'm on. But Missouri's still not reporting their uh, COVID cases. Is that correct? To, um, they're not playing ball nationally. And I don't know if they're doing it now. I don't know how that's working once we get past state. We do ours. Um, they're reportable to us. Um, and then we enter it into the state system. And I think the state was reporting it to the CDC, but they weren't keeping track of their own dashboard was one of the discussions that occurred at the last meeting. Just personally, I've seen lots of friends, acquaintances, neighbors, and people that I have dealt with through different outreaches that uh, I've seen the uptick in in uh, COVID cases that is reported nationally. We just, since everybody's self-testing, nobody gets reported, so. Yeah, I've been seeing, not that I can see the self-test only, like one every three months will call me to report their own self-test. So we do get a few, but not most of them. Um, but we <laughs> I, have I've seen had, an increase I've in had hospital four, reports. I've had four neighbors in 30 days, so. Yeah, we, we, uh, we did see an increase in the hospital reports. I want to say like early September. I haven't gotten as many in the last week. Um, so those are slowing down a little. Are we doing a wastewater surveillance for COVID? I believe we are, because that was part of the discussion with the courier services. So um, yes, independence is. I'm not on those reports. Are we, I mean, as, as of now, are the levels low? Are they going up or do you have that information? I do not have that in front of me. I think I can, I can look though. I just don't have it in front of me right now. Other questions, immunization or it, it would, where do. So we, it's a theme for approved, me. So. <laughs> we just got approved for VFC. Uh, well, we were approved a couple months ago. We just received all of our yeah. VFC vaccines. So we'll be starting on those shortly i am working with state to get access to the covid vaccine covid and flu vaccines for uninsured adults um so we should have those in the next couple weeks as well um and then once we get those in we will start having vaccines for uninsured and then we're going to work our way up to those that are insured so how does that get communicated to those who are uninsured i know there are avenues but just would you help me understand how that gets out to them? Yeah, right now, for the most part, they know to call the health department and they just kind of call a bunch of health departments. We get calls daily for people looking for vaccines. Um, at one point, we did a billboard. I don't believe we're doing that again, but we will be putting it on um, Facebook and our other. I think that's the only social media the health department one has. So the city will put it on their social medias as well. I'll make sure to update our website. Um, but for them, a lot of people 
go to like a CVS first and then the CVS tells them to call the health department because that's who typically has the uninsured vaccine. So a lot of people are already aware that that's where they would get it. We've just had to refer them to Jackson County for the last couple months. Okay. Okay. Well, that includes yep. childhood vaccines. Yes. So we just got our shipment in, I want to say a week ago for all of the childhood vaccines for um, uninsured or children on Medicaid. So we have those. Um, we're going to start with flu and COVID for those that are insured because it's about to be flu season. And then we'll work in the rest of the childhood vaccinations. That's wonderful, exciting news. Other questions for Lauren? Lauren, thank you. Yeah. Christine, Christina, anything? Um, just to update us on, I know it's not on the agenda um, to put on a radar or anything like that. Um, we are gearing up for, of course, the next um, step in our community health assessment is our community health improvement plan. So you guys will likely be getting um, invitations to attend that and to weigh in. We've already, we gave our presentation to the council about the community health assessment and in the week after, we actually had quite a few uh, organizations, agencies throughout Independence reach out that they were excited about the idea of being able to work on some of these issues. So we've been meeting with some of those groups and we're going to continue meeting with them and get our chip um, firmed up. And so you guys will be looking forward to that. We also started planning for a social service summit again um, for this next year. We had one this year in March and next year we're going to have it in April. Um, so we're really excited about doing that. And yeah, everything's in the planning stages right now. And as soon as we actually have firm things that we can release that we're absolutely sure of, I will let you guys know. Great. So our next meeting is scheduled for when? You know, one you know, day I, always I'm gonna, that. I know and, and yet I am never, ever prepared. <laughs> so it is going to be December 5th. Okay. Okay, that concludes our agenda. I would take a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Moved. It's uh, second. moved and second. Did you get that, second. Christina? Second. You got two. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 All those opposed, you can stay on as long as you'd like. Folks, thanks for and have a great evening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Thank you.